When we went over it, we split it in half. We were directly over it. So definitely have an object where you you saw it on your sonar. Okay, the world seems a lot bigger when someone's missing. Mm -hmm. In a search for a missing woman with mental health issues, the mother of 40-year-old Christine Anderson says it's been weeks since she's heard from her daughter who is bipolar. Still holding out hope that Christine Anderson is okay and will call home soon. Quick update, back at this boat ramp. Um, last night we were able to drive the road to where her last known location was, which was where the boat was parked. So the last known location of Christine was on a houseboat that was parked near the Teal Bend Golf Course under the Southwest Flight Path. I'm 80% sure I was able to find where that photo was taken, her last photo posted to Instagram, uh, with those pilings and, and the sunset um, and the railing of the houseboat. I found the pillars and I found the boats in the photo and the river turns to the left. That I think our search area just got larger. Now, what we're doing here today is I called um, her friend again, Christine's friend, to meet us back over here. I also have Dart, uh, the rescue, the dive rescue team uh, is coming to meet us here. And I'm going to be showing them exactly the spot here in the water that I believe there's a vehicle. I don't want to just assume that this is a vehicle that's already been checked. Can we dive it again? And is DART going to be a resource at that? And if DART is not going to help us uh, you. put eyes on this vehicle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan a trip with Nick Wren. We're going to come back and I'm going to use his expertise, his diving skills uh, to clear this vehicle. Yeah. That's him right there. DART. Nice. How's it going? Good. I'm Josh. What do you have the points for where we'd be searching? Okay, so the last known location of Christine was on a houseboat that was parked near the Teal Bend Golf Course under the Southwest Flight Path. Okay. She, she was supposed to go there the next morning. She was supposed to meet a friend over in America. Which, which puts the hot spot is but right she here. she never showed up. But what we figured is we put in, water's a, a bit higher, we go do some sonar runs. Um, See what we see versus what you saw. See sure. if we can put a camera on it. We did bring our own water camera. Uh, and then kind of talk from there. I'm gonna go mark uh, where I was using the shore's reference um, while out on my boat yesterday, and they're gonna use these uh, for their reference while they're scanning today. So this is the group of trees that I was using as reference yesterday, where I believe is straight out, the vehicle is straight out from. And this will help them uh, kind of visualize what I was seeing. That's the straight line there, and then where that line of the four trees comes out, right. that is where I do the view.
what's going on. We have the markers that I put out right here. He's standing there also as a, a marker, just for uh, reference. They had to go downstream so that their scan is against the current. That way they can control their speed. They're aiming for two miles an hour. Uh, hopefully this boat doesn't send a bunch of waves towards them because waves are not sonar's friends. But here in a second, they're going to go over the spot. And we're going to see if they make a big U-turn and uh, have to go check it, double check it. Looks like they're pointing at something. And they are turning around, just like I was hoping. And hopefully they start rescanning this spot right here over and over again. And that will mean that they see what I saw. several times? Yeah, they need to. Um, I scanned it four or five, six times. Oh, okay. Just, just to get my clear image. Which is which is hard because if you're just going one one shot, you can miss it. Um, clearing a boat ramp takes a grid. Okay. In order to do it successfully. That makes sense. I mean, the world seems a lot bigger when someone's missing. Mm -hmm. You always think, like, oh, I can find something. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, with all the little places. Right. See, they're looking and they, they did find, I think they did go over something. on that um, so definitely have an object where you you saw it on your sonar um, so we I'd probably say we see a lot of cars um, and a lot of a lot of things down there with our sonar uh, on this one there's a lot of sand and there's pretty clearly an object in that location so this is just the first impression what we saw um, was a lot less certain than what we often see um, which could mean age it could mean the river's up and there's a lot of cloudy stuff around it right now, um, you know, or it could have just been hard to get to. Sure. But that being said, we saw it on several of our passes on our side scan. We anchored up twice. Mm. We were able to see it with our live scope both times and got closer each time. And we saw it with multiple perspectives. So uh, it's going to be absolutely zero visibility. Uh, even with the light on, right now you can't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah. It's kind of water. Shot the milk. Uh, what's that? Chocolate milk. If you're lucky. Yeah. And then the current, especially right here, is, is pretty heavy. And the depth is moderate. So there's a lot of risk factor in a dive right here for something that but I would say we have low certainty in. Were you able to see like logs or trees up against it or it's just the... Uh, no, I didn't see... There, there are um, logs and trees in the, re in the area, but I didn't see any of those up around this. That's something we want to go back and look at post-processing. Sure. Uh, so what I would say is this is worth a dive, but probably not right now. Okay. So there's a lot of risk with this kind of diving. Sure. Um, yeah. But that being said, you know, I would say we're very interested in waiting for conditions to improve and coming out here and taking a look. Um, okay. We're always interested in helping on these things. If we, you know, 
we'll do mile. We'll come out here and do miles and miles of searching, um, and we'll come up with a lot of targets. So it's really helpful to pin those down. Sure. But it's what we do and what we're interested in. Sure. So. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. I think All we're right. gonna wrap and take off. All right. Sweet. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you very well. Thank you for your help, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you here. Hey, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. You bet. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. I've waited nine months. I'll wait as long as I need to. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But waiting for the optimal yeah, diving conditions don't, it doesn't always happen, especially with all the snow up in Tahoe. It's like yeah. it'll forever be full. Right? They definitely found something though. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you so much. For yeah. No problem. Thank you so much. Well, quick recap for uh, the situation is these divers confirmed that there is a metal large object under the water, right where I said it was, and that it is uh, of interest th of them to want to dive it, to clear it. However, they came to the conclusion that the conditions are too hazardous to dive. Um, they said that they have concerns of divers that can get pinned up against the cars because of really strong currents, and they do not want to risk uh, any of their divers in trying to get down to see what kind of vehicle this is. Uh, they said visibility is bad, water temperature is bad. Um, so they, they put a big question mark on when they're gonna dive this or if they're gonna dive this. Um, but they said that once conditions are better, they definitely want to make that happen. Um, my next step is I'm going to be contacting uh, some really epic divers that I know and asking them if they want to be a part of clearing this um, vehicle uh, based on these conditions um, to try to give Christine up here uh, some more answers to if this is her friend or not. Um, Christine Anderson, Christine with a K, been missing for, has been missing for eight months. Her last known location was somewhere in this area and she just vanished. Uh, her vehicle was never seen on any cameras. Um, she never called home, she never used her credit cards, she just disappeared. And the gentleman that she was last seen with, he also went missing as far as uh, talking to anybody. Uh, he's not missing a missing person, but uh, he's been hard to track down. Um, that raises a lot of suspicion, which is why we came to this boat ramp, whether uh, this spot, you know, could be a good area to get rid of a vehicle. But there's still a lot of questions left open on this case. And there is one more boat ramp about 10 miles up the river that I want to check out. It'll have, have to be a different day. But this vehicle here needs to be cleared. This was the most probable location and we have identified a vehicle. So uh, this is a big, big deal, a big case for, um, for me, for Josh Cantu. I mean, me finding a vehicle uh, with my dad on a fishing trip. Um, it just shows that my system that I, that I decided to put in my boat is capable of doing this. And, you know, I, I'm not a skilled, super skilled diver to be able to dive these conditions. Uh, I'm still learning my sonar unit and still trying to figure out, you know, what I'm seeing. But it shows you that I'm in, I'm in the right direction, and I'm making progress. And I do have uh, awesome friends that do have skills, and together I feel like we can do something that makes a big impact in this world. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that need answers out there. There's a lot of cases that have never been solved or even attempted to, you know, clear these waterways, clear these ramps and clear these targets in the water. So I'm excited to be taking on this endeavor with my friends and uh, with you guys and trying to do my best and to um, 
utilize what I know how to do and what I've learned uh, in the best way possible. I do want to um, note that I've come this far uh, because of the people that I've worked with in the past and the teams I've been a part of and I, I, I don't take that for granted and I don't uh, take those chapters as, you know, in a bad light. I, I see this as progress and I see this as moving forward and uh, I'm not trying to, you know, put anybody down. I'm, I'm just trying to, in my own way, do, do my own thing and try to help uh, with what I can do. And being here in my hometown, Sacramento, California, was a big deal for me and I really wanted to come and be part of this case and try to uh, bring answers to somebody here in my hometown. And anyways, I just hope you guys can be a part of that. And um, I hope that, you know, past team leaders that uh, may be watching this video don't see this as a threat. I'm not here as a threat. I'm here as, you know, an ally in the field of solving missing persons cases, as an ally in the field of trying to bring answers to families uh, in, in a, a very respectful way. And I really hope that, um, you know, this video doesn't lead me uh, down a path of, of having to defend myself for trying to help this lady. And I hope you guys can support that, that um, this, this isn't a competition. You know, we need to all make sure that we can do what we can for these families and, and spread out and, and work together. And I'm not here to, talk bad about anybody. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had uh, to learn what I've learned, to work with the people I've worked with, and I really hope that I can continue down a path of, of, of helping people. That's where my heart is. Anyways, thank you for being here and thank you for being part of this episode. I'm gonna close it out. Um, I look forward to making a second part of this video for you guys. Christine Anderson is 5'3 and weighs around 120 pounds with blue eyes and blonde hair. Anyone with information on her whereabouts can call the San Diego Police Department.